For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to This Awakened Generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Ebuoku. Welcome to today's edition of uh, This Awakened Generation. My name is Mazino Ebuoku. I am the senior pastor of the Tree by the River Church, also known as Christ City in Maryland, Lagos, Nigeria. This program is coming to you from a message that the Lord has put in my heart. Over the last few years, we've spent time waiting on the Lord to hear the mind of God. The Lord asked me to put my ear on his heart so that I can hear his heartbeat and know precisely what his mind is in these last times. The Bible says that I am looking for a faithful priest that will do according to that which is in my heart and that which is in my mind. And this program is coming to you not to tickle your fancy, not to scratch any itch in your ear, but to tell you the undiluted will of God for you in these last days. We are in the last days. And I tell you, our enemy, the devil, is walking over time. He's come with all kinds of counterfeits. He's come with all kinds of strategies that are so difficult sometimes to discern. And one of the things that this program will do for you is that God, through this program, will open up things to you that will help you to walk in the straight and in the narrow path. Because the Bible says that there is a path that is narrow and there are only few that find it and that's the path that leads to eternal life. Over the next few weeks, I will be talking about a series of messages I have titled, Which Race Are You In? Because you see, many people are in different kinds of races. Jesus once told his disciples, Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. So you can see that there are some people in a race where they are seeking first the kingdom and its righteousness, and then there are some in a race where they are seeking every other thing, and then maybe later they'll seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. But the point is this. At stake is an eternity that is not easy to get into. When we die, there is an eternity that God sent Jesus to come and reveal to us. In fact, I dare say, the ultimate message of Jesus Christ is not that you're going to be healed. It's not that you're going to be delivered. These are the things that will be added unto you. The ultimate message of Jesus Christ was that he came to unravel the mystery of eternity. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus was not an end. Jesus was a means to an end. God sent Jesus so that. That means God's ultimate gift to mankind is eternity. Either you go to heaven, or sadly, he doesn't want you to go to hell, which is forever. He wants you to go to heaven. But if you refuse to live your life according to what the Bible calls the righteousness of God, you will have yourself to blame. And this program is sent to you as a warning. We're not interested in being popular. We're not interested whether people like it or whether don't, they don't like it. Our interest is that they who have ears to hear will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in these last days. What you hear, my Savior soul, 
what you hear might deliver you from the counterfeits and the um, deception of these last days. In the last days, men will be lovers of self, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So you will find out that it's not that they are not lovers of God. Bible says they will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power thereof. So it tells you that in these last days, there's going to be so many people going to church. There's going to be so many people claiming to have relationship with God, but they are really disconnected from God. And Satan will be goading them along until they cross over into eternity and they will be in for a rude shock. Because you know, in the last days, you know, Bible says, few be there that find it. Many are called, but few are chosen. In the last days, the Bible tells us that demonic seduction is going to prevail in first timothy chapter 4 from verse 1 he says in the end times he says seducing spirits and doctrines of devils they're going to fly around the whole place bible tells us in the last days it will be like the days of noah's ark where people were marrying and giving away marriage they were just having a wild wonderful time forgetting ignored blinded that just ahead is an eternity that is forever Jesus is coming back and we cannot play about this. It's time to wake up. And like I said earlier on, this program is not a program that everybody is going to enjoy. But those of you who love the Lord and love his coming, sit down and listen to what the Lord has to say. Just like Paul said, our goal is to present you at the end of the day. Having said, I have fought the good fight, I have run my race and I have kept the faith. And now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge will give to all that love his appearing. Do you love his appearing? Join us now in one of our services at the tree by the river. I know that the Lord will speak to you. Open your heart and receive his engrafted word with meekness. God bless you. The flashiest cars, houses, jewelry, or clothing. The happiest moments, most ecstatic experiences, or the very beautiful things we can enjoy on earth are a joke compared to what we shall enjoy in heaven. In fact, there is no iota or fear comparison. To crown it up, heaven is forever and is God's very best for any man. Jesus Christ came so as to offer to us God's best, a heaven of unimaginable splendor, beauty, peace, fulfillment, joy, satisfaction, and glory. A place void of pain, sorrow, or loss. Why should anyone neglect such a priceless offer? For this reason, the apostles and Christians of old labored so hard to let men know about this great news. Plan to make heaven and make it in flying colors. Give your life to Jesus Christ and live a holy and spirit-filled life in Christ Jesus. This morning, I want to talk about I want to talk about a series of messages I have titled which race are you in which race are you in which race are you in and I pray today that the Lord will enlighten you because some of the things that we are about to talk about are actually generational messages messages that can transform a generation of believers i pray that you open your ears like jesus said they who have ears to hear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church we are not in a time for fun and games we are in the end times and there are certain peculiarities about the end times the bible tells us that in the end times iniquity shall abound and so the love of many will wax cold while everybody is shouting peace and safety it's a lie because for us to think that we are in thriving and everything the people who are going to survive the end times are called a remnant you know why because already Jesus has prophesied what the end time is about. You can't change the prophecy. Try as hard as you want. 
but may you be a part of the remnant may you be a part of those that will have their garments still in white and will make it unto the end bible says that in the last days men will be lovers of self lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god bible says in the last days false prophets and false teachers and false brethren they shall arise and they will be stimulated by their love for money and they will start preaching all kinds of messages it will have the name of jesus somewhere but it will not teach people how to be a covenant people they will know nothing about what the blood of Jesus has done for them and they will be teaching principles, motivational messages. Look around you and see what is going on. And over the course of this series, I'm going to be talking about each of these things I'm talking about and more. And you will be able to discern and do what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians and chapter 2 verse, or chapter 13 verse um, um, 5. It says, examine yourself whether you be in the faith he didn't say examine yourself whether you have faith no whether you are still in the faith examine yourself to see whether you are still in the faith do you know why i tell you why because in jude and ch chapter one there's only one chapter in jude bible says beloved when i gave daily diligence to write unto you concerning the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Did you hear that? He said, let, let, me, let me summarize it in plain English. He said, beloved, I want to tell you about this salvation that has come. The salvation that Jesus brought. Now, I'm not going to be going into that, but I've talked about that before. You know, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, the Bible says, well, I marvel that you are so easily influenced and um, you, you are listening to another gospel. Say, say, say same thing in, in 2 Corinthians 11. It talks of another gospel, another Jesus. All through scriptures, we have been warned that in the last days, Satan is going to come into the church. And he's so subtle, that's, going to, that's the final major onslaught against the church. And that is the difference between heresy and counterfeit. One of the things that the devil is going to use to destroy or, 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 or liquidate or neutralize or dilute the body of Christ in the last days as prophesied is very simple. We find it in um, Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4. I think I read it to you the other day. First Timothy and chapter 4. Now listen to what he says. He says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter days or in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Are you listening to me? This is one of the signs of the last days. People will depart. Now, now, a lot of times we misunderstand that scripture to think that it means people are going to backslide and become another religion or something wicked. No, 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 no. I explained to you some time back when I talked about the ten virgins. Do you remember? The ten virgins, five of them, the wise ones, they had oil in their lamps. They were full of the spirit of God. They were preparing and anticipating for the coming of their bridegroom. But the other five were careless. They were all sitting in the same church. They were all in the same arena. But Jesus said, get out from me, the five of them. He didn't open the, day, the door for them because they had departed from the faith. Departing from the faith does not necessarily speak about people who are going to become wild and demonic no you can be prophesying lord lord i listened to rw shambach oh lord bless his soul he passed away last week he said i preached a message once and i wrote it into a book how to cast out devils how to heal the sick and still go to hell <laughs> praise god and it's so true jesus said many will say lord lord 
Did I not prophesy? Did I not heal? It should make every Christian thoughtful. It should make us concerned. It should make us worried. It, uh, God doesn't want you serving in fear, but he wants you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, with a deep and strong sense of responsibility. Guard it seriously. Don't just think I have arrived. You will be playing with fire if you did that. Do not allow people to fool you. That's the battle in the church now. The battle in the church is about people opening their eyes to truth. There is a satanic war against truth. There is a satanic war going against truth. So all kinds of people are in the place. People that are uncouth. People that are unprepared. People that, you know, there are many reasons. A million and one reasons. A man wakes up and says, God has told me to start a church. And maybe he's really called. But tomorrow he didn't hear God clearly. And he says, God told me to start a hundred branches. And he starts a hundred branches and then he looks for this usher and looks for the other person. And these people become policy makers. They become people who set the tone for prophetic direction of the church. And they know nothing about the mind of God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Even if they thought they knew. The Bible says no man takes this honor upon himself. Except him that is called of God. They don't have the calling to effect that kind of grace. So all through the church, you'll find out that all kinds of adulterations have come in. And that's what he's saying. He says in the last days, that's what will happen. Now you will be a fool, scripturally, if you do not wake up in the last days to open your eyes. Because it has already been prophesied what will happen in the last days. Hallelujah. He speaks expressly. That people will desert the faith. And we can see that everywhere. I always like to say this. The easiest litmus test. To know. Whether you are still in the faith. Is what I call the believer's creed. Titus chapter 2. From verse 11 to verse 14, 15. That's the believer's creed. And you see it by yourself. It's clear. It's there. From verse 11, Titus 2, he says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying godliness, ungodliness. Now, let, let me take that again. He says, For the grace of God that does what? That brings salvation. So you need to understand, there are many salvations. There are many gospels. Every gospel is bringing to you different kind of salvation. I want you to examine yourself today and ask yourself, which kind of salvation has the gospel brought you? The gospel you've been hearing. Because some people's salvation is breakthroughs and miracles and money and so on and so forth. This is, the, this is what the grace of God that brought salvation. Jesus dying on the cross. This is the produce of it. It says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to men, all men. And it teaches us that denying ungodliness... And worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking forward to that blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So you need to understand this. Salvation was brought to you so that it will accomplish something. If it doesn't accomplish that in your life, then it's not the salvation that God brought through Jesus Christ. It's another gospel. It's another type of salvation. The salvation of Jesus will cause certain things to happen in you. It will make you a new creature. Old things will pass away. You will have a new affinity to doing righteousness and to pursuing the will of God and to honoring God. Your whole life will be about God. As we progress down this series, I'll be talking about covenant and you'll have a deeper understanding of what this is all about. We are in the last days and you must wake up. Go through the scriptures and read the prophecies. We'll be dealing with that. So that you can understand what race am I running? What race am I running? You can't afford to fool yourself. Anything you want to do, it has to be backed now by covenant. 
by covenant you can't just do things because it sounds good because it's enticing words of men's wisdom it has to be based on a covenant practicing people people who are fulfilling a part of a covenant and god is fulfilling his part of the covenant some people don't even know anything about that what race are you running today what type of christianity has been presented to you what have you believed what have you believed what is your christianity about what is your relationship with the living jesus christ about hallelujah the lord showed me a vision recently that has seriously affected my life and when i was in liberia not too long ago it became so clear to me because I had a wonderful time with the Liberian brethren and, and the Lord made it very clear what he wanted to do with that vision. I know that the vision that the Lord showed me is a warning to his church. It's an eye opener to the body of Christ. And over the next few weeks, I will be sharing that vision piecemeal, piece by piece. It was a simple vision. One by one, he showed me four different things. And these four different things, they symbolized the state of the church and what was needed to be done. So that his glory could come back. And so that we can fit perfectly into the end time church. The church of the last days. The church that is under attack. Somebody say, oh no, we're not under attack. The siege is over. The siege is not over. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. We are living in the times of perilous, subtle, demonic attacks. You know, I was trying to talk about counterfeiting and, and heretic gospels. I will talk more about that later. But in a nutshell, I'll tell you. You know when a gospel is heretic, everybody can see it. What is heresy? Heresy is when people come and say, Jesus is not Lord. Or they come and they tell you that um, Jesus was not virgin birth. We can see through that. It's easier to see. It's no different from a fake note. If you've ever seen a fake $100 bill and a real one, a really fake one, those ones that they use cardboard to make, it's so fake that even you don't need any machine to look at it. But the danger with a real counterfeit is that it looks so much like the original. And when you spend it where people have the equipment to locate the original is, you will be arrested. You will be detained and locked up. This is the danger of people buying into a counterfeit gospel. That, that, you see, the, the counterfeit, you can only use real equipment to locate it. They put it under mercury lights and all kinds of things. And when they do that, they can see some watermarks. You know, just on the surface, you will not see the watermarks of the gospel like the things I'm reading to you in Titus chapter 2. And everybody's saying the same Jesus. Everybody's going, I'm in the same church. I'm living for God. But it's a lie. Everybody's heart is different. People are yielded to different elements. By the time I start talking of covenant, you will discover that there is nothing like covenant if you, there's no sanctification. You know? Because... The whole reason of covenant, these are the same people that will say, I am above, I am not beneath, I am the head, I'm not the tail. It's a lie. That was the old covenant. And guess what? In the old covenant, God said, if you shall obey the Lord your God and do all that is written therein, then the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. So, being above and beneath or not beneath was predicated on if you shall obey. But now we want to dispense blessings and miracles and gifts without people obeying God. It's a false doctrine. It's not the word of God. Why? Because covenant, the only thing God required, when he says, I will be your God and you shall be my people, is that for you to be his God means that you must be a set aside people. That means you must be different from everything, from the world. People must see you that there are some peculiarities about you. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people that know how to pray, a people that know how to decree. You are a chosen generation. You are set aside for him. And these things are showing. The Holy Spirit is on your life because you are holy. Holy Spirit can be in the life of somebody who is not holy because his name is holy. 
no matter how hard we talk and where we preach no matter how glorious we look let me tell you something without holiness no man shall see the lord it's either holiness or hell it's a fact and it's a truth holiness or hell but in these end times the important things about the gospel they have been diluted and it's done for different reasons i'll talk about that over time my 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 work right now the reason why the lord is asking us as a church and as a people why we have to sound the trumpet particularly in the media television internet we need to amplify it because we're in the last days far adventure some people will open their eyes and hear because he that has ear to hear they must hear what the spirit is saying the flashiest cars houses jewelry or clothing the happiest moments most ecstatic experiences or the very beautiful things we can enjoy on earth are a joke compared to what we shall enjoy in heaven in fact there is no iota or fear comparison to crown it up heaven is forever and is god's very best for any man Jesus Christ came so as to offer to us God's best, a heaven of unimaginable splendor, beauty, peace, fulfillment, joy, satisfaction, and glory. A place void of pain, sorrow, or loss. Why should anyone neglect such a priceless offer? For this reason, the apostles and Christians of old labored so hard to let men know about this great news. Plan to make heaven and make it in flying colors. Give your life to Jesus Christ and live a holy and spirit-filled life in Christ Jesus. Oh, welcome back. I hope that you have been blessed today by the message you listen to. That is all we can take for today, but it continues again the same time on this station next week. So I advise you to um, call your friends, phone somebody, tell them, hey, look, God is doing something new. There's revival in the land. God is speaking. He is speaking. And um, those of us that have a keen ear to the Spirit of the Lord, and those of us who want to hear what the Lord is saying, call your friends, tell them on this station, God is saying something by this time and I can guarantee you that um, God's word will come to you pure without caring whose ox is God. God bless you. Thank you for watching These are Weekend Generation. We trust you have been inspired by this message. Tune in again on this channel at the same time to hear the heartbeats of God. Please send your testimonies, suggestions or inquiries to testify at tbrchurch.org or info at tbrchurch.org. We would love to host you this Sunday by 9 a.m. Visit our website or contact us on the following numbers. Jesus is coming soon, so stay rapturable.